So can we reverse fibrosis? And the answer is yes. And studies have shown that patients who uh, remove, sorry, who improve their metabolic profile uh, can see NASH completely disappear. And in fact, about half of them will see their fibrosis improve to the point that the liver will function completely normally. It's important to recognize that once people have developed cirrhosis, they are still at risk for liver cancer, but all of the other features, all of the other disease burden can be improved simply by improving uh, the metabolic syndrome. In terms of uh, reducing fibrosis, uh, some companies are now working on medications that we hope will increase the rate at which patients are able to dissolve their scar tissue. One of the, er the important areas is that we need to increase education for patients as well as primary care physician and some other specialties such as endocrinology and even gastroenterology. Many patients are not aware what does advanced fibrosis mean. They end up in our clinics. They sit down in front of us. We do one non-invasive testing or two or even liver biopsy and we tell them they have advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis. And a lot of them, they will not understand. They will be surprised. And then we explain to them what's the sequences of that, such as progression to cirrhosis, eventually decompensated liver disease, liver failure and cancer, and it comes to a surprise for them. Therefore, one of the huge tasks that we have done when these patients come to us is education, education, education. A lot of these patients come to us overweight, obese, and as well as with uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled hyperpressure. One of the very tasks we tell them, your metabolic syndrome and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease with advanced fibrosis need to be controlled. So we advise them to go to their primary care or endocrinologist to control the diabetes as well as the hypertension. Many programs, they have nutritionists that they start teaching patients how to lose weight via different strategies. It's one of, one of the most effective methods to help non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. However, once patients get to advanced fibrosis, it is probably important to add another thing to their lifestyle. There are few medications that are recommended by the American Association of Liver Disease as well as the European Association of Liver Disease that sometimes we prescribe to the patients. Some have side effects, some are not very effective for fibrosis, and therefore new therapies are needed. Another thing that we educate them about once they have advanced fibrosis, they're at risk of cancer. So some patients starting hepatocellular carcinoma screening, which we do on average every six months. As I mentioned, weight loss is very good strategy as at, at a baseline, and for advanced fibrosis, you will probably want to add other things. But the problem with weight loss is that many patients have been the same way for many, many years. Some of them are initially successful. However, the overall success rate has not been overwhelming. And therefore, the search for new medications to reverse advanced fibrosis has been crucial. Once the patients have risk factors for NASH, um, it's good to uh, screen them for fatty liver. That could be from a primary care provider, or if the primary care provider does find fatty liver, or if a primary care provider finds uh, an imaging suggesting a fatty liver, it's okay, to, it's okay to even refer the patient to a gastroenterologist or a hepatologist, because the most important part is to assess for fibrosis, but also use our tools to motivate the patient for their lifestyle modifications. Right now, it's a partnership because it's, most of the work is on the patient. We don't have a pill per se right now. I know there are a lot of research going on regarding therapeutic options with pharmacotherapy, but right now what we have is lifestyle modifications. And part of that, it's on the patient, but also we have to motivate and guide the patient. One of the things we shouldn't be doing is just say you need to lose weight and that's it. That gives the patient no resources. You really have to work on diet counseling and exercise counseling uh, 
goals for their diabetes, goal, weight goals, and that drives the patient a little bit better to achieve their modifications. The American Association of Liver Disease and the European Association of Liver Disease manage the disease almost similarly. There's a slight difference in recommendation of a screening. For instance, European authority recommends screening for those at high risk, such as the diabetics and at the age of 55. The American Association of Liver Disease has not yet recommended screening. However, with more cost-effective analysis in the future, everyone feels that this will happen in the future. Both societies nowadays recommend vitamin E and pioglitazone to these patients, and usually they recommend starting with a liver biopsy to diagnose NASH. We feel that has, this, has gonna be, uh, this is going to change in the future, and we're going to target more the F2 or the advanced fibrosis patients to reverse their disease. Vitamin E and pioglitazone have done well. However, they have some side effects as well as they have not shown to be very effective in reversing fibrosis in the trials that they have been in, uh, involved in.